Morning, Admiral. Good morning to you. Good morning, Carl. Good to be with you on Veterans Day. Fitting that we're having this conversation on Veterans Day. What do you think, if negotiations do not go well, what here is on the line? Well, for defense, this $600 billion that is in the sequester, if they just take a razor haircut across the board, it could be very harmful. However, I would argue, much like Bowles-Simpson Commission presented, that we could take a $600 billion decrease in defense if we do two things. First, remember that an aircraft carrier today, as one example, can strike in 24 hours nine times the targets that that same aircraft carrier could do just 15 years ago. Because we rely not upon how many aircraft or ships anymore, we rely upon capability. Satellites that can see a target pop up as an aircraft is in flight with miniature types of bombs on them that are laser guided and can have real time targeting. That's number one. Number two, if we do it, we have to remember that in our defense programs, in 2008, we had a $300 billion cost overrun. And that's because we in defense sometimes are under what we call the tyranny of optimism of how we budget. For example, when I ran the Navy's $350 billion warfare program and we wanted to procure another aircraft carrier, the confidence that that number being right of $11 billion was 35%. You wouldn't buy a car if a car dealer told you with the confidence that you would get that price was 35%. And that's why I think we've got to sit back and make sure we have a strong defense. But let's do it like we want the other government agencies to do, be accountable with our spending. Do you think the larger concern is about the capability of the military if the sequester happens? Or is it about the jobs affected? Is it a combination of both? Well, actually, it's a combination of both. And you used the exact right term, Carl. It's no longer capacity, how many ships, how many aircraft squadrons. It's the capability. Can you figure out where bin Laden is and then have an agile force go and get them? For example, China has 82 submarines today. We have 50. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. We want a sensor system that finds them and have an unmanned air vehicle go over and drop it. We've got to change our military from quantity to capability. Second on jobs. If you remember, the Defense and Aerospace Association said that we would lose upwards of 1 million jobs if the $600 billion in the sequester goes through. There's only 3.5 million jobs in the entire defense and aerospace industry, including Boeing building civilian aircraft. That means for a 10 percent cut, we're going to lose 33 percent of our workforce. That's wrong figuring out. We do have to have defense be a welfare program, but let's not try to scare everybody by saying maybe we don't need another ship. We need another sensor to find that submarine. That's the type of change we need in defense, much like we need it in HHS and State Department to be more efficient and cost effective. Yeah. We've obviously got some tea leaves to read over the weekend when the president spoke on Friday. The speaker spoke. A lot of pundits weighed in uh, on Saturday and Sunday on the, on, the, on the political talk shows. I asked this of the former GM chair a moment ago, whether or not he felt more optimistic this morning than he did on Friday afternoon. I'll ask it to you right now. Absolutely, I am. Here's why. Two reasons. They're the two men who head their respective parties. President Obama doesn't have another election to undergo. And so he's removed from the weight of addressing entitlement reform, which we must do. So the very far left can't pull him back from doing that. And then you have Mr. Boehner, that I think we Democrats should be thankful as head of the House of Representatives, who almost came to a grand bargain two summers ago, where they were trying to build for a while, and still are, a nuclear capability, way wound down by cyberspace attacks, their centrifuges to delay them for a while. That's the type of dominance that we have to switch to. Not how many you've got of ships, but what's the capability resident on. You can right. do a lot more with less if you shift your money into this sensor-based type of warfare. Right. Well, anybody who realized uh, over the past few weeks how much we uh, rely on the electric grid knows exactly what you're talking about. Admiral, Absolutely thank you right. so much for your time. Great to be on with you, Carl. Well, thank you. Back. Let's get our capital markets op ed this morning. Gary Kaminsky is uh, going to weigh in on Lucadia Jeffries. What a deal, eh, Gary? Yeah, Carl, we'll get to that in a second. I was just uh, listening to the JCPenney stuff at the, uh, at the end of the last hour. God, do you remember when we had Ron Johnson on? It was January 25th last year.